Welcome to the Cisco Secure Analytics Network Detection and Response Tutorial Series. My name is Brett Nelson, and I'm a Technical Solutions Architect for Secure Analytics at Cisco. In this use case, I will be demonstrating how to investigate breach detection in Secure Analytics, specifically a remote access breach using stolen credentials. Before we begin, let's review the benefit to your enterprise in using Cisco Secure Analytics to detect remote access breach. According to a Ponemon Institute cost of data breach study of 419 companies in 13 countries, $3.62 million is the average total cost of a data breach. To help combat this, it is critical to try to account for 100% of network conversations to detect threats that bypass traditional monitoring solutions. You can use Cisco Secure Network Analytics Network Detection and Response Solution to account for all this traffic and detect those threats that are bypassing your traditional monitoring controls. In this use case, I will be demonstrating a remote access breach using stolen credentials. You will see firsthand the importance of capturing that flow data from as close to the endpoint as possible to be able to account for all active and historical network connections. To enable this, you will need a Cisco Secure Analytics deployment running a minimum version 7.0 and visibility of all host-to-host -host traffic from the core distribution or access layer. Secure Network Analytics has the ability to segment hosts into host groups to provide a logical boundary between common assets. By default, there is an inside host group and an outside host group. Inside host is anything your organization owns by public or private IP address. Outside represents the internet. Let's investigate a possible remote access breach targeting your organization. From the web interface, you can review the default dashboard. But let's navigate to monitor host groups. This will show you how you can filter down to different segments. If you click change host groups, you can review the tree and how you can further filter. For now, we'll stay at inside hosts and click apply. Make note of any policy violations within the alarming host section. You can see here, there are three alarming hosts with the policy violation alarm. Scroll down and make note of the top applications. Within the top alarming hosts, review any hosts that have policy violation or PV indicators. In this example, we can see that 198.19.30.36 has the policy violation alarm trigger as well as many other alarms. Go ahead and click on that IP address to further investigate. You can review all the sections within this host report. The results may be different than what I'm showing here, but in this example, we see the alarm categories is reflecting this host generated the concern index, the recon index, data hoarding, exfiltration, and policy violation. A threat could have been stopped with earlier detection and response to prevent a host from reaching the exfiltration phase. Review the host summary to learn about when this host was first seen and what host groups it belongs to. Make note of the peer traffic to outside hosts in this middle graphic. The alarms by type identifies which alarms have been triggered by this host. This includes the custom security event, .cse, possible remote access breach. Scroll down and review the top security events. Make sure you can select target as well so you can see when this host was the target or victim. Review the users and session data. This data provides information like logged in user, the MAC address, device information, and this is provided by the Cisco Identity Services Engine. This provides additional context about the host in question. Review application traffic if there is any. Scroll back up and click on the number below the policy violations to investigate further. Review the details of what caused this policy violation alarm to trigger. To see even further information, click the hyperlink under details. As you can see, there are a few security events specifically focused on the .CSE possible remote access breach. The, .3, or the 3389 reflects the port which the source host connected on. TCP port 3389 is commonly associated with the remote desktop service. To investigate further, you can select on the three dots under the actions column to see additional reports, external lookup of the IP, or let's go to the associated flows. This will show us the flow records associated with that specific security event. And this will show the details of that flow record. 
If you'd like to go and see specifics about that custom security event and what it is set to look for, go to Configure Policy Management. Here, you can specify your own policies and create your own custom security events, but let's look at the possible remote access breach event. Here shows the details of this custom security event, and I can further click edit to see the details that we were looking for. So this was looking for anything from outside hosts greater than 10 packets to the client of inside hosts over these ports and protocols, which includes 3389, and then greater than 10 packets from the peer. So this allows me to see that I'm seeing bi-directional traffic with that specific service. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. If you're interested in learning more, sign up for a test drive. This is where you'll receive hands-on experience in our online dCloud environment. You can also sign up for a free visibility assessment where you can test out the software in your environment. Also check out the features and benefits of Cisco Secure Network Analytics at cisco.com slash go slash secure network analytics.